we'll move on actually talking on Liverpool and we're going to move on and talk about Liverpool, Pete, because we know they're looking for a new central defensive midfielder. Are there any names, please, on that list that they've sort of targeted or, or, or are looking at potentially bringing into the club? Yeah, it's going to be an interesting transfer window, I think, for Liverpool. Um, obviously, under the new recruitment structure that Michael Edwards has come back. Um, we've got Richard Hughes coming in from uh, Bournemouth as well as uh, sporting director. So a lot of pressure on uh, the recruitment team to get things right. I think uh, Liverpool now, there's no Jurgen Klopp. They've got the new manager in orange slot as well. So they will want to give him some players to improve the team. It does seem that central defensive midfield is an area of the team they want to strengthen in. Endo did a decent job for me last season. Obviously, he was a bit of a surprise signing when uh, they did sign him from Stuttgart last year. He did a decent job, but obviously they missed out on uh, some of their midfield targets last year. They, they made that late move for Casado before he ended up going to Chelsea. They're in for Lavia from Southampton as well before he ended up going to Chelsea as well. So one name that seems to be doing the rounds at the minute is uh, Alan Vlalera from Porto, Argentine midfielder. Um very good stats and everything else in the Portuguese uh, league. Again, it's a bit of a Javier Mascarano if uh, Liverpool fans uh, can remember him. He's a similar type of uh, profile to Mascarano. And if he's half as good as him, I think Liverpool fans will be pretty happy with him. He's also got uh, a buyout clause in his contract as well at Porto for around £60 million. And obviously, Liverpool have done some business in Portugal in recent years, having brought in the likes of Darwin Nunes from Benfica as well. So, I th I'm sure the way Liverpool's approach is going to be in this transfer market, it's going to be data-driven um, like it has previously been done under Michael Edwards. And I don't think they'll be signing too many players probably over the age of 25. Um, they'll be looking for players that they can help develop uh, and everything else and uh, get value for money because I don't think the new regime in FSG will be chucking money at it. So I think Valera is one of the players that's been mentioned. There's been talk of Bruno Guimarães as well from Newcastle, but I don't see that. Being, being the case, I don't see Liverpool going out and uh, meeting his 100 million release clause as well. So, yeah, I think the Liverpool recruitment team will be doing their homework right now, scarring all of Europe and the world to see if there's who they can potentially bring in uh, to improve the team. But I do think, looking at that Liverpool side last season, Alexis McAllister filled in in that CDM role on, on quite a number of occasions as well. But we probably saw the best of McAllister when he was pushed further forward into that number eight role, which he's accustomed to. He did a decent job at, at the central defensive midfield, but I think you get the best out of him in a more attacking role as well. So if they can bring somebody in that can improve in that uh, area of the team, uh, well, obviously, uh, I'm sure we'll see an improvement in uh, Liverpool's performances and results as well. And Paul, it sounds like they've been targeting a top striker going into the summer window. What do you think that means for some of their current forwards, like Pete mentioned, Darwin Nunez or Cody Gakpo? And actually, could that affect their playing time or their future at the club potentially next season? Of course it can. If you bring in a direct replacement or somebody who plays in your position, then yeah, absolutely. But uh, you know how much truth is in that, we're, we're yet, to, yet to see. Um, but Liverpool's forward line, it's, it's, it's very strong. You know, you look Salah, Gakpo, Nunez, um, Diaz as well. You, you look, the thing for Liverpool... The goals have been spread through the team. You know, all of those players mentioned there, they both, they're all in double figures for the season. So there's goals, that forward line, they all score goals. Whether they're bringing it a striker, I think the biggest one it would affect would be Nunez. But he's a player that I like. I mean, we, we criticise him for the amount of chances that he's had and not his conversion rate and everything. But I think he's he's there. He's, he's there and thereabouts now towards the end of the season. His work rate, he, he puts himself in the position. And I think his finishing is, is, as well as has really improved in the last 12 months. I, I don't see the, the huge need for a, a striker at Liverpool. Listen, if, if Salah goes, then there's a different conversation to have. Um, if if they, they accept a huge bid for Mohamed Salah, then there's a conversation. But at the moment, I think there's other areas of the Liverpool team, starting eleven that needs addressing before you look to go and buy a striker. And Peter, are there any other potential positions that the club have targeted going into that window? So you mentioned CDM, we've sort of spoken about a forward. Are there any other positions they're targeting potentially and any other names we could mention? Yeah, centre-back is an area of the team that uh, they've been looking to strengthen in now for the last couple of transfer windows. Uh, ideally, they're looking at a left-sided one, potentially a long-term replacement for Virgil van Dijk and then somebody who they can help develop. Um, a number of names have been mentioned um, that the club are looking at. Um, Inacio of Sporting Lisbon has been one name uh, that the club have been linked with. Uh, he's also attracting a bit of interest from Manchester United. Uh, but yeah, as I said, I think... Liverpool probably will be waiting to see what departures maybe happen as well. Um, I think they'll be looking for a new goalkeeper, potentially a number two, especially if uh, Kovine Kelleher does end up leaving. Um, he obviously played a lot of games last season due to Alisson's injuries. So I think Kelleher might have uh, 
got the bit between his teeth now that he feels he wants to be playing regular first team football after getting a taste of it this season as well. So if he is to go, they're going to have to bring in a, a pretty sort of good number two because Gallagher did step up when Alisson was injured as well. There's no doubts Alisson is the number one. And despite talk of interest from Saudi Arabia in the Brazilian, I expect Alisson to remain at Anfield uh, for this season and uh, work on the orange slot as well. So I think probably centre back uh, would be the and goalkeeper would be the two other main positions that we would be looking at. Potentially a left back as cover for Andy Robertson could be another area of the team that uh, the recruitment team might look at. Uh, there's been talk that Simicast could maybe move on as well. So I think covering the full back areas is probably another uh, part of the the team that the, the Liverpool recruitment sort of setup would look to improve on as well. But yeah, there's a good nucleus of a squad there for Arn Slot to work in. Obviously, it's Liverpool 2.0, as Jurgen Klopp says, and I think he's left a, a decent squad there for Arn Slot to, to work on and to improve. Mm. And Paul, to kind of tie in that whole ongoing Manchester City case, we know that Liverpool have been deemed a self-sustainable club. If they are to win, how dramatically could, say, Liverpool that are pushing for the top six, top four, how dramatically could they fall behind the likes of Man City or Newcastle if City are to win and actually are able to spend the cash that they have? It's hypothetical again, isn't it? I mean, City, uh, the, the, the wealth that City have and the wealth that Newcastle have, you know, it's it's unrivaled in the Premier League. Yes, there is investment and there's there's a lot of strong investment. But you look at Liverpool over the years, they've, they've sold some of their players at their peak and we've quite often questioned why they've sold the likes of Coutinho at the time they did and thought, where do they go after selling Coutinho? Suarez as well. But the, the recruitment's always been there. The rebuilding's always been there and they've brought the players in that's bolstered the squad. Um, if Manchester City and Newcastle are able to spend at, at will, then it would be interesting. Um, that lays down the gauntlet for other owners, for other investors. I can't see it happening though, Lewis. I really can't. I can't see any kind of ruling that will allow... The, the FFP, the PSR and the sponsorship rule and everything else to just be blown out the water. They've spent a number of years putting these in place and a number of years discussing them and, and getting the clubs on board. Let's like, like Pete said, all the clubs have agreed to this. All the clubs have signed up to this. They knew what they were getting into. So to put all this in place, just because Manchester City have come out fighting and they're fighting a separate case to the PSR and the FFP, 115 charges, we've got that case separately to the to the one that they've come out fighting the self that they're going after the fa i can't see these two cases having that it will it will have an effect obviously whatever the ruling is but i can't see it been a huge groundbreaking effect where the the, the ruling is okay all the ffp psr sponsorship rules forget that you can go and spend what you want we're never going to get to that point so i don't think there'll be a gap where other teams can't get close if, if you know there's always going to be some kind of a ruling a legislation in there You've just watched a segment from Football Insider's brand new podcast, The Inside Track, with me, Lewis Pierce, alongside the guests on the show. Thanks very much for tuning in. Please do give the video a like, comment your thoughts on the topic, and feel free to share on your social media pages. If you want to listen to the full podcast episode, click the link in the description below. Keep your eyes peeled for plenty more content and exclusives here on The Inside Track.